uh, campaign cartographer three set up. We're going to go for round two of this stream. We're just going to use this to draw a, a druid circle in a forest clearing. So the first thing I want to do is activate my sheets and import my chosen. I use a custom um, setup. All of the, the sheet effects that I want are, are kind of pre-built in there. We're going to take a second to move them around. The program will draw in the order, as in the first thing on the list is drawn, followed by, followed by, followed by. So to make sure that you have what you want appearing the way you want, you want to make sure that you are setting up your sheet and effect order correctly. And... Uh, not overlapping your own work with something that shouldn't be there. Move you down. Go there. Our mask go there. Move all of you down a wee bit. Just about the floor. So there we are. A little tedious, but worth the effort. Once you get everything set up, it's act, it's genuinely worth the effort to have um, a custom set of sheet effects built for your software. Symbols, wall, torches, flats. Move down, move down, symbol up. Where's my symbols moving? Yeah, we're going to move this whole section here to the top. Move up, not to top. Up to where it's a little more useful. Top dress is kind of what I use for the be-all, end-all to make, to cover up. I don't want to say mistakes, but falls taller should be down here. Medium, flat, low, medium. All right, I believe we are in business. Hit apply, go. So I've got a dirt and um, grass bitmap background. I want to set a five foot grid to make sure that when I build my entities and when I set up the map that there is enough space for people to play with, uh, whether you're the players playing on it or the, or the dungeon master or referee setting it up. You want to make sure you have a play area for them. So yeah, we're going to kick that on. Um, if your software does it, make sure you apply your grid some software you got to do your grid after kind of sucks hopefully hopefully yours will let you draw over a grid without affecting the grid um yeah okay uh we're gonna go with a medium brown hill in the middle i want to leave this off at about 20 foot off the map edge on top oh that's gonna be way bigger than i want it i hit delete a couple times I'm thinking kind of a, a bottom of the map approach for the party. So make sure to give them some space towards the top or back of your map, as it were, to do things, to move around, to use a flank. Okay. I want this to be, a, you know what, I want this to be bigger because it's actually going to be the hill that the uh, circle sits on. So I'm just going to grab it, make sure I'm still lined up with about 15 feet. I want to rotate it. Give, uh, I'm going to rotate it this way. Make it a little more oblong. 15, 15. Go, boom. All right. So we're going to turn this from a druid grove into a, gro a druid hill. Okay. I'm going to put this up on my hills and hit effects to see what that does. Gives me a flat topped hill. Mm, no, I don't like that. I want to draw my own hill on top of it. I'm going to go to my bevel, edit the size down to 10. We're going to go 20. Make sure it stays as one. Oh, you know what? I'm going to make it bigger and let the bevel do the work for me and give me a flat top. Okay. 
Okay, it looks a little funky with the edge. We can fix that with some with some uh, softening effects, but we definitely want a flat topped hill. I like that. Uh, and then next thing I want to do, I'm going to turn my effects off for now. No rough, you know, I'm going to leave them on for just a second. So next thing I want to do is drew my structures. So I'm going to use my floor draw tool. I'm going to go with dirt, dirt gray one straights. And we're going to use snap for this. Because I want the uh, five foot five angle snap cursor snap. I want to go five foot by four foot obelisks. And so I've used a simple draw tool to give me a nice good square. I don't, I want to make sure, because this, this is going to show up as a floor or as background. I don't want that. I want it to be a, a nice tall. Okay, so we'll see if, if, if auto save is helping me or killing me. Um, go to wall. Go to shadow directional edit. I want this to be a longer. So yeah, I've got my my base piece there. It's been, had its properties changed. It is now free for me to do whatever I want. So this is going to be the basis I use for all of my obelisks around this. Okay. Move the first one off. Give me a redraw. And I'm going to go to copy. Nice and copy. To here. We'll give about a five foot gap between each one. Yep, that's too far off. Pay attention to where your bevel edge is as well. We're going to make these in pairs. If you need to find adjust, you can hold control and shift. And do five between that and 10 to there. I want about 10 foot between each pair. And a little over five between the pair. So from what I have in mind, I want to do kind of like the Stonehenge effect and, and have cross beams going over the top. So we want these to kind of line up vertically with the edge of your uh, plateau rather than horizontally. So I'm, I'm gonna, while I'm at it, go ahead and turn this off. I know where my outlay is. That way I can go a little bit quicker. Copy 10 off, adjust here. Lower 10 off, lower five between the pair. I'll do one more here. Lower 10 off, five between the pair, slight adjustment. And one more over here again, and off five between them. And I'm gonna hit sheet effects on to make sure I stayed within my, my plateau. I'm pretty sure I did. So let's zoom out. That's right on edge. We're gonna zoom out a tiny bit. Get the overview. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. It gives us a little bit of a fronting area. Um, so the next thing we want to do is, is this is set on walls. So we're going to use, I believe I use dirt gray two for that. So we're going to go with three for a darker color. Now I don't want... I mean, we didn't go through the trouble of drawing the bases just to make them disappear, so. It's going to disappear underneath it because it's, again, going to the dirt layer. So I'm just simply going to assign it to what I have as walls taller. So now it's got nice depth. It contrasts against the bases below it. If you want to, ref uh, I'm saving manually because I don't want this thing to crap out on me again mid-play. Mid, uh, 
But um, so yeah, if you wanted to reverse them, it's as easy as selecting these two, say like you wanted the darker on the bottom and lighter on top. You go over here and go to dirt gray two, hit okay, and it's the same color. It'll freak out if you leave it like that. And we're gonna take this one to the dirt gray one, excuse me. Leave your layer alone, or change your sheet back. We're going to fill style. And we're going to go to dirt gray one, and this will pop to light. So personal preference is, is however you want. I'm going to, uh, you know what? I actually like that, the darker against the lighter. So I convinced myself. <laughs> we're going to select all of these. Property, dirt gray one, hit bitmap. Hit OK. They stay where they're at. Everything else stays the same. And then I'm just going to copy. Oh, no, there's a dirt gray, too. Duh. I almost made an ugly mistake. Six, eight, ten. All right. We wanted the darker on the bottom. Stop doing that, too. Turn that off. Dirt gray, two on bottom, one on top. Yay, we're in business. Copy. Entity, and then you just use your commands to rotate it around a little bit. This is built without engineering. So, for example, this one I'm going to, um, and remember, as long as you've assigned them to separate sheets, each of these are their own entities, and they still remain that way if you make them look the same, but they're a little harder to select. So redraw, some of these are a little bit close, so we're gonna get in here and fine tune. I'm just gonna select that object, move it out a tiny bit in relation to the, the upper obelisk. And boom, to there, and that one's gotta come over here quite a bit. Yeah, just a couple little tweaks. All right, so we've got our, our druidic circle We've got a little bit of a, you can't really see it there with the way the bevel works, but there's a small extension up here. We've got a larger open area here. Let's just zoom out for about 15 minutes worth of work. We've got the basis for our map, okay? Center point focus, I that's how I kind of build. I try to make sure that my my, my focus is is taken care of, and then everything builds around it. Um, sometimes you don't even have a focus if you're just building a rando forest battle map. You're cutting through the woods, you hear a sound. Well, let's go follow the sound. Okay, it might just be something they do. And, and you, the purpose of that map is to be generic enough to be adaptable to multiple situations, multiple different approaches. Unless you're building for a specific encounter or a... a, a Tip if you're building for the community, if you're building for your friends, if you're trying to, to, to get a, a, a content business going. Make sure your stuff looks definitive enough to be definitive, but not so definitive to where the potential customer has to use exactly this and exactly that in the map. Defin cool enough to stand out, but generic enough to be adaptable. That's kind of what I'm always shooting for. <clears throat> So I'm going to start adding the, the outside. My middle is done. I know where the focus is. So let's start dressing up the grass. I want to go with some darker. He's going to go right into it. Irregular shape. Okay. Slash key. You can tell I'm just a dude. I'm not a professional user because there's a lot of stuff that I do wrong with Campaign Cartographer 3 that I'm sure the hours that be know how to fix. I want that there. But... So after I draw them, I tend to uh, grab it and then kind of enlarge a little bit just to see if it'll take up a little bit more space without looking too too crummy it'll that's fine because the map edge will drop off Ooh, i forgot to add my sizes
Please don't crash me. Thank you. Come on, Jim, learn how to type. A little bigger than I wanted it, but that's okay. Just kick it there. Grass four. Remember to draw in contours when you're doing natural stuff. Say like we want a little bit to come up on the hill. That's fine. The program will take care of it for us. This side. So this isn't the map for publication or sale. This is something we're drawing together for fun. Um, demo in the software as well as as you know some techniques for building this document map. So right now, our plan is to have this a forested area. So sight lines are going to be an issue. They should be an issue most of the time. There's no need for a group to move if they can see everything from where they're standing. Then it becomes a big game, game of Kite the bad guy. Unless you're melee, then it becomes a big game of cross the gap and hope you don't take too much damage on the way in. But I digress. Pop you in a little bigger just to fill in more space. We'll take you, same thing. A little more space. And come on, render. Uh, sure, it looks okay. I don't like, no it doesn't. I don't like how the, the grass, I'm gonna do something different for that the area where it crosses into the hill. I don't like that. So we're gonna take those back down a little smaller. Move them off away from the hill a wee bit. Okay, cool. A entry is from the south. If you want to put a path in, you can use the same basic color terrain that you have. Uh, dirt 3, I believe, is what we were going with. Dirt 3 curved. Start down here and... You know what, let's go with dirt too so it'll stand out against the uh, hill itself. It's kind of a off my sheet effect. No, I don't need them right now, so I can draw a little quicker. Zoom in, get your details right, all of that good stuff. Assign that to outside too, just to make sure it keeps its edge fade against everything else. We're going to hit activate and see what happens. Okay, so yeah, you've got a, a kind of a, a worn trail up along that. Let's say we want to add some, some uh, no. We're gonna add some shrubs and bushes here in a second to the outside. Let's finish up with my central point, just so we can be done with it. Uh, let's see what the symbol set has to play with. We're gonna go with, first we're gonna put a set of, of hobbling in the middle, kind of as a, uh, central point for the, Circle, is it necessary? No, but it, it kind of gives you the contrast. It gives you a little bit more to, uh, for the, for a little bit more background to pop. And let's take a nice, simple stone altar of the same basic color. We're going to make it big and we're going to move it to here and we're going to make sure to give it too much of a, sh too much shadow going up to, no, we're going to go with symbol, see what it looks like. All right, boom. What does that look like? Kind of all right. 
you got some mud coming up over your your altar you got uh, over the stones around the altar you got your big obelisks going on up there right up to the edge of where we need to be so the next thing will be little details there all right so let's finish out some terrain out here uh do you want to have some smaller hills kind of some berms around it if you will sure why not now this is a cool trick um courtesy of the experts over at campaign cartographers facebook message board um to add hills without adding kills i guess is well to, to without having to add extra effects so you go to fill style give yourself a solid 20 bit map it just kind of colors the stuff right but if i go over to here and i have hills i'm going to add a i'm going to take the hills i'm going to add a new one and call it berms okay i'm going to copy these two effects over to berms but i need to go in and change the bevel because it's way too big for a berm and hit apply and okay on berm nothing has changed on the map because nothing's been assigned to berm so we're going to take that solid 20 that i just grabbed and we're going to assign it to berm and it's going to take that terrain and add those effects to it so nothing visible now let's change some effects change it to 10 uh change it to one oh we change it to 10 intensity is going to go up a lot because we want smaller and it's a smaller hill so we're going to hit apply and now you see a slight warp in your terrain you have a, a bermed shadow without actually having to do a ton of stuff and add an object now, if I take this and make it bigger, it affects a bigger area. Just to get, but that's not what I want. I want, I'm gonna undo. I want the actual effect to take up more of the space that I did. So I'm gonna take that to five. The lighting is good. The smoothing will take down to three. Apply. I need to take it up to 20. I'm still learning uh, bevels and all that stuff. Yeah, that's a little better. So we've got a small warp in the train. We're going to add a couple of more of those just to add some dimension to the map. Um, da -da 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 -da. Hit activate. We're going to take you, change you over to berms and change you over to solid 20 bit map hit okay another small little crest is the intensity too high I just don't like how it's got a big crest on it. We're gonna have all of the effects. I hit apply. Apply. I like that better. It's a little more, you know how? Let's put the light back up. The, the edge is softer, but the lighting is a little bit shadower, more shady across the board. So if we go to 80%, I think that keeps your overall lighting normal on the one side while altering it from the other side. Yeah, we're going to take that. We're going to just add a couple more of those around the map. Da -da -da. Break up your background a little bit. Let's select both of these. Come on, berms. Change it to solid 20. 
Hit OK. Save. Please save. Please don't crash on me. Please be nice. Oh, I don't want to blame CC3. I'm running on a six-year-old computer here, seven-year-old computer. So it could be my shit. I just might not be up to system specs for streaming guy yet. All right. So we've got some of that in. Let's add a little bit more color variation. Um, just a couple patches of lighter. Just like some strips of... Like some... Crabgrass, weed garden type things. Kind of helps everything pop. And, and when you're doing the larger maps, when you have a, a highly textured bitmap, it does kind of repeat itself very quickly. So if you can break it up with different effects, you're doing yourself and your uh, users a favor. Sometimes it comes up a little bit more. Tedious, yes. Worth it, in my opinion, it is. I'm not going to do a bunch of these areas because I'm actually going to, uh, when I add in some trees, I'm going to do kind of some, we're going to back in underneath it and do some, some dead leaf type effects, some grass effects and stuff. You know, where you'd have a tree, you'd have a little less light underneath it, so you'd have a different kind of grass growth. And again, you can use those small little effects to just break up the monotony of your map. You get a little jaggy, that's okay. Uh, edge fade enter is nice at saving you from so. Okay, so where are we at here? Obelisks. Rounded top with a flattened plateau green around it ah, ah i hate the i'm my own worst enemy man i gotta kind of just break this up a little bit and maybe have another path running up around the back side of it That's barely visible. That's okay. It's just supposed to be barely visible. Just something to break it up a little bit. Add some, some funk to it. Add some fun to it. Trees, trees. So, um, one of the bummers about DD3 as a default, it don't have a ton of vegetation. As in, you've got four bushes, two different bushes, two shrubs, two trees. So your map's going to get stale pretty quick. So um, either pick up the annuals, which I'm working on, on getting support my Patreon, buy my maps, do all that cool stuff, help me build my collection. <laughs> follow me on Twitch. Follow me on YouTube. TM Geezer Jim. Lots of content out there right now on Etsy for me. I have some lots of stuff on Etsy, some stuff on Patreon to try to encourage long-term support and followers. A couple publications on DMs Guild, just working on building content. But until then, I had to go digging around out in the uh, Twitter sphere, the, the the interwebs, and find as many variations as I could of public use assets. Um, so I'm actually just so you know what I'm. What are you doing, dude? Okay, these are my default pieces of art. I'm going to throw a tree on just, just for fun, just to show you what it looks like in relation to. And here is one cool thing that, that is when you use the default tool sets, the, uh, they are set to randomize and adjust ever so slightly on uh, the angling and positioning of the symbols. You're stuck with two symbols. At least it helps you changing them out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit activate sheet effects. I don't know where they put trees on. Yeah, they're just symbols. I don't like trees with that low shadows. So once again, I will go through, grab all of my trees. 
I didn't want that selected. We're just going to hold down Control D, select that. Hold down Control D, select that one. Hit do it. We're going to put you guys on walls because you got better sh better shadows, a little bit more glow, pops the trees. Okay, those don't look bad. Um, there is a cool aspect of it. Some of your templates are designed to work with your color uh, color wheel selector so you can get another color if you were in there but this is the default so if when you where you look on your symbol selection you see where it says option you hit left that's kind of the, the most recently used and your basics for your compasses cartouche uh, map rows and all compass rows and all that you hit if you just click on where that folder is it takes you to where you are in your symbol selection this is all dependent on symbols, castles, cities, cosmographers, dungeons, and then any other custom stuff you might have. Uh, it gives you a user folder. I didn't learn that till later, so I actually went through and made custom folders within modules. Problematic sometimes. Um, so far, it's been okay. Custom dungeon sort. This is where I've gotten all of my freaky... Uh, Massive amount of, of public public domain purchased on DMs Guild, so on and so forth. Um, as long as you get something that is a PNG file with a transparent background, it will typically work okay. There's a lot more that goes to it as far as scaling, as far as making sure the symbol will scale within the measurements. So I'm not telling you to go pull down every PNG that you find. You will have problems because I did try that as well. <laughs> but nonetheless, let's go to my custom vegetation oh no i want to go to trees I'll go to just all others click on it so when you click on the first symbol in whatever folder you're following finding it will stock all of the pertinent symbols in that folder ready for use now <coughs> for, uh precaution when you're using custom symbols, they're not attached to any sheets. They're not attached to any layers. They're not attached to anything. So you need to make sure that you're going in and assigning uh, the layer, the active sheet, prior to using your symbols. And the active layer, that's right, doesn't come with uh, vegetation on this one. Bah. We'll go with uh, elemental, just organize this doesn't matter just for, but so these are some of the custom trees they don't look great against the other ones but they look good with the symbol set that's why i i went ahead and used the uh that's why i like using dd4 you have a little bit more play i'm going to show you what i'm talking about here in a second because i'm going to pull in one of the internal modules just to show you what i'm talking about so as I'm drawing them, they're they're getting the outline, they're getting the shade effect that's been assigned to that sheet already. So you, once you make sure that your draw settings, your your effects and your layers are are good to go, every time it redraws, it's going to add your shadows. So you have some contrast of the DD3 default trees against some imported third-party uh, artwork. Better, worse. I think different artworks better with different styles. DD3 is your most. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go back into here. We're going to go to symbols. We'll go to dungeons. We're going to go to Schley SS4. Beautiful vegetation. See all of the when you're switching between symbol sets, between styles, between DD3 and SS4. If your map was built in DD3 and you go to the SS4 symbol set, anything that's been attached to the SS4 sheets is not going to show up in DD3. That's why you're seeing all of these funky colors over here. These are dead. Um, they're useful, but I have to do everything to, to add them to it. 
it's okay we're not we're borrowing symbols we're not borrowing um, entity uh, draw tools but yeah Schleza, a uh, pretty good stuff his, his I like his art but when you drop it in here it just it it doesn't mix well with dd3 because every other facet of the ss4 symbol is drawn hand drawn built out it works great with itself but it doesn't really work with anything else and by proxy nothing else really comes into ss4 and and has a good look to it so um yeah quick and simple demonstration on how to pull symbols in so i'm going to stop talking here for or stop drawing for a second here and uh even though it's not perfect symbols we've got the battle map set up we've got our central point done what would you use in something like like this D, &D 5e obviously you've got druids you've got arch druids you've got cultists uh, that could all be using this little circle of of whatever for whatever um you can make it into a Feywild crossing you know maybe you're dealing with red caps and nil bogs and stuff like that a hag or something that's got the, the the connection to the fate the the wild magics as it were um it could be an elemental temple maybe an earth thing though i don't really see that an elemental temple of earth would actually be underground so i'm going to turn off the grid here uh and and just kind of zoom in a little bit we're going to, um, I've been going for a little bit here, but yeah, I just wanted to throw something out real quick, show you how quickly you could make the basis for a fun map and just some context, contexts and concepts to think about when you're drawing your maps. You want to break up your color lines a little bit, use some texturing, uh, some effects to just break up color. You want to be aware of how big your play area is. You want to make sure that you leave enough squares on the map for the groups to move around. Uh, you want to make sure that your focal point is obvious, but you also want to make sure to leave space, which goes back to checking your grid. Make sure you're aware of your sight lines. If there is a point on the map from one where one person could see from one corner to the other corner without being obstructed whatsoever, is that by design? Here, let me just kind of, we'll go into to playing around with DM thinking here now. I'm going to make that a foot wide. And we're going to change this to uh, orange for a second. So if my player is down here, you know what? Let's have some fun here. This ain't the best map, but I want to go ahead and, and play around. We're going to take it to round two, and, and how do you use this map? So I'm going to save this as a PNG, and I'm going to go into my image base PNG custom file. This is 150 by 150. We're going to keep the uh, details good. DPI OK. I'm not trying to print it. I'm just trying to save it. We're going to turn on grid snap. Why are you not snapping? Boop. Boop. Why are you doing this, DM? Watch. I've talked about how I use, in a couple other videos, how I've used a uh, command. Uh, uh, Campaign Cartographer 3 for a virtual tabletop. Let me go ahead and demo that while I'm drawing a quick and easy map. So it's transferred over. It's an okay looking PNG. I mean, you get what you, you paid for. We spent 20 minutes, had an error, and had to redraw it. So it's it's a 20 minute old map. Doesn't look bad. Doesn't look great. I could, I, I'll, I'll probably go back through and revise it and actually make it into a nicer map. I digress. That's not what we're trying to do here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and activate sheet effects off just to save a little bit of memory. I'm going to open up a new map and just out of habit, I go into battle ready. Where's my battle ready? Multi-use prep maps, uh, druid circle, ER1. What I'm telling myself is this is player ready. Come on, man. Yes, create the file. Let's save this. 
Oh, come on, man. Oops, new. We'll try it again because it didn't make a new the way I wanted it to. I started. I opened a file, but I didn't do it. That's my dumb. 150, 150. Use the same measurements. Uh, style doesn't matter. Wizard doesn't matter because we just want a blank. Solid 10 bitmap is going to be my background because it's going to be non-existent here in a second. We're going to hit finish. This is what I was looking for. We're going to go into my CC Master FEV. Quick battle map, to it circle D, uh, yes, replace it, yes. Okay, so we're looking at a gray background, there ain't nothing here. So I go to draw, I go to insert file, I go up a level to my image base PNG, I look for the map that I just did, Druid circle. Now I'm going to use the absolute path because these maps are all in the same folder. That's why I, exp that's why I have an, my folder external to CC3. So I can do this without having stuff mixed up. It does cause problems like if I ever have to reinstall stuff like that, I'm going to have a hard time getting things to work again. I'm going to pay for that later, but it is what it is. So make sure your cursor snap is on. Line up in your corner. Uh, that didn't work right. I'm going to undo it and I'm going to redo it because I clicked too soon. Insert file. Do Use absolute path, start in corner, go down to, oh, corner, hit OK. Hit save. So now I have the map rendered in detail, scrollable, much quicker to use. It's reading as a background now. It's trying, it's not trying to render every object as it redraws. Is taking the map that I made, I turned it into the PNG, exported it back in as a background, and we're here. So, token treasury. Oh. Oh. Okay, stop it. I'm open to. I'm just clicking too quickly these days. I'm gonna click to here. Why are we giving me a hard time? File. I'll save. Token treasury is open. Has no pending DRQ at civil. Oh. Okay, well, you know what? I do something different here as well. I go to my token treasury. I go to my so token no frames. These are all custom made tokens for my player characters. There's a million and one token makers out there. Find your own help yourself. Uh, this is not for commercial. This is for personal. We're allowed to do all kinds of stuff personal that we're not allowed to do commercial. So I've got all of my custom tokens. They've been saved no differently than any other symbol. Okay. This this character token, as far as, com as, far as campaign cartographer is concerned, this is a chair. This is a rock. This is a tree. At this point in the process... This is a blank map to CC3, and this is a symbol. For us, this is a party of adventurers. And this is their enemy. Yeah, let's go to... A, just for fun. What can we get? Big old ugly green hag. Sitting here with her other sister. And a couple little nilbogs running around. And maybe they have two satars that are Guarding. Okay, so when playtime comes, I've built my map in, in Campaign Cartographer. I've exported my map back out as a PNG, re-imported it as a background. Grid is all intact, everything is ready to go, and now I've dropped my custom tokens in. And all I do from here is do share screen through Discord. 
If you use Discord user, you know what you're talking about. You can share screen. You can actually share application through Discord. That way it stays just on, on your map. Okay? So, um, make your map. Make sure you're paying attention to areas. Like I said, right now, these guys here. Let's go back to my draw tool, what I was wanting to do earlier. We're going to do this. Okay. So, does this person have line of sight? You're just going to take, I use a draw tool for it. They lose line of sight immediately with the hill. They've got some area around, but you've got some trees breaking it up. You've got some trees breaking it up. So the hill in the middle is a big, uh, a big break point to their line of sight. So that's what you want. You know, typically you don't want the players to see the whole map the whole time uh, they have access to it. Uh, they have plenty of movement. Let's say the party says charge and wants to get up the hill. Ah, and they run up against the satyrs. Okay. There's enough movement in this area for all of your combatants to be in the forefront of it without any. You've got the slope as well to work with. There's more than enough space movement. At the same time, we still have the obelisks and, and uh, the, the Stonehenge builds to allow for cover. This dude sees these guys coming. Oh, no, I'm going to run in here, hide under here. Oh, no, I'm going to run over here and take opportunity attack, but now I'm going to shoot at you with partial cover. Oh, we're getting a shot at. We have cover. Um, meanwhile, you had the ninja of the group that no one uh, was paying attention to. He's sneaking off around over here because you gave him enough room. He's succeeded on a stealth check to here. No one's seen him. He succeeded on a stealth check and gotten out to here. Oops, come on, Jim. This is the downside of CC3 as a VTT. You have to do all the movement. You have to control the tokens for the group. You have to do all of that. Um, some people will argue, oh, hell no, they can all use roll 20. That's fine. That's another app you have running for everyone in the background. You're running Roll20 plus D&D Beyond plus Discord plus, potentially. Your players are also running Discord plus D&D Beyond plus Roll20 plus. Uh, my players don't have to use the Roll20, but they have to tell me to go north five squares, south three squares. Although we always get into, I want to move over there. Where? By that tree. That's helping me. Right there, as they point at the screen. I can see them pointing on their camera, and I'm like, dude. Uh <laughs> But so, in this situation, our, our main party's tangled up here. They're seeing everything there, but they didn't notice that there were some bad guys on the back of the hill because of line of sight. Just going to grow a couple. Uh, let's say that these hags have a pet chimera. chimera. Did I freeze? My token selections, ah, it's not working right now, but that's okay. I'm actually getting towards the tail end, but yeah, that's just, that's, that's not a big deal at, at all. Oh, I'm in draw tools. That's fine. But anyway, um, spent a few minutes drawing two different maps. The first one looked a little bit better, but my program crashed. My computer froze up and everything went to hell. So I do apologize. Second one was drawn much quicker, but I think we were able to demonstrate some stuff cover some basics of, of, of map design for an encounter. Make sure you've got space. Make sure you've got your center point. Make sure you're checking line of uh, line of sight. Uh, there are a couple other campaign cartographer three centric uh, points in here. So I will probably throw this up onto my, um, my, my tutorial series on YouTube as well. But if you've been with me here, I appreciate your watch. If you uh, catch this later, I appreciate your watch. If you're catching this on YouTube, Thank you. Uh, you know what? Wherever you're catching it, thank you for your time. Appreciate you spending what you know your precious time with me. Uh, like the video, follow the channels, subscribe to the channels, follow the follow the the Twitch and subscribe to the YouTube and like the videos. Thanks a lot.